Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we've got a special treat. We're gonna bulk cook pre-chicken. I know pre-chicken is really popular. I've put, my videos have done really well and photos I put on the Facebook groups are getting a lot of attention. So I'm gonna show you how we upscale. We're gonna do 20 kg. So I've shown you plenty of pictures of 20 kg pre-cooked chicken. Today we're gonna to make it. So let's get ready. So we get breasted chicken uh, like this, they're quite large size. Um, the best one on the market we found is uh, a brand called Super Polo. Uh, you can't get it in your supermarkets, but you can get it online, I believe, and they only do 10 kg boxes um, at one go. So it's, it's bulk buying. So I've cut two boxes, which is uh, 20 kg chickens. That's how much we, we do at one time. Um, and as you can see here, that's been pre-cut. What we're going to do, as you can see, it comes in like a, a V shape. So we're not going to split it in half straight away. We're going to just cut the end off. So if you cut the end off, you've got a nice sort of like a rectangular shape. So it'll be even sized chicken all the way. One thing that's very important is to get it all even sizes or, or as much as possible. Otherwise, you're going to have some chicken that's going to rip. Um, and other chickens aren't going to be cooked. So now we're just going to slice it in half. And then we're just going to carefully cut it evenly shaped. Can you see they're fairly even? There's no big differences in the uh, chicken. So I'm going to roughly get about 11 pieces out of this, 11, 10, 11 pieces. So if you see from here, they're all fairly even, they're all fairly even sized. So the next step is we're going to wash the chicken. Um, so we've got a large colander like this, just going to rinse the chicken in cold water. So I've got two 10 kg chickens here. And we're just going to pour it on the colander. And just going to wash them. So we've got two uh, fresh new buckets. Um, we're just gonna now put them back in, getting ready to cook them. Can you see they look nice and shiny and clean now? Okay guys, now we're on step two. So we've um, defrosted the chicken, we've cut it into even uh, sizes, and now step two is gonna be actually cooking it. So we've got a big pot, obviously. Um, so you can purchase them. Our um, gas uh, cookers are very industrial. So you at home, might it might take a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna go on our, our uh, thing. So I've got a big pot here. Uh, we've got about, one and a half litres of oil, vegetable oil, we just use normal sort of vegetable cooking oil. We so need uh, a few minutes for that to just heat up. The way you could test if it's heated up is you just add a bit of garlic ginger. The next step will be the uh, garlic ginger paste. We've probably got about 40 grams of garlic ginger paste here. 
once it's bubbled up, then you can kind of tell the oil is hot enough. Yep, that's getting ready. Bubbling up. So you could probably put the whole thing in now. Now what you want to be careful is that it's not burning. If you think it's burning, then just add a little bit of water. Or turn the gas on. Turn the gas down now. Just stirring it in the middle. You want it a little bit golden. Uh, once it gets golden, you then got your the next ingredient, tomato paste. I don't think I'm going to need all of this. Probably around just over half. This is undiluted tomato paste. So you've got tomato puree which goes in the curry, which we use this as an ingredient, but it's not the same. So we've got a tomato paste here. As you can see, this is much thicker than the one we put in the curry. And the ones we put in the curry, we dilute it with water. So it's more thin and it cooks faster. So we've got that 10, about 10 grams roughly going in. As I said, you can put water at any stage, just to make sure your pot doesn't burn. So that's cooking nicely now. Make sure you are stirring it, otherwise it's going to just get stuck at the bottom and burn at the bottom. The main place you want to stir is where the flame is going up. So as you can see, I'm doing it in the middle, which is where the flame is. Just going to turn it down a little bit. Now the next ingredient that I'm going to put in, I've got about one litre. This is just onions um, blended. So you can just put onions cut, take a little bit longer, you just get a few onions, cut them up, put them in and make sure they melt. This is already blended, this is from my base gravy, uh, the, not the finished part but the second part, so the bit after I've blended it, I haven't put any spices or anything in yet, but just the blended bit, this we find is faster for us, rather than putting onions and waiting for them to melt. But it's up to you, like I said, you can put onions in, and that's going to go in. Okay, so now we are, we're, while we're waiting for it to heat up, we are just uh, gonna get our spices ready. So I've got two teaspoons of uh, chili powder. Uh, chili powder, it's not gonna be spicy. The only reason we're gonna put it, two teaspoons in that much chicken is not gonna be spicy at all. Just for the color, it'll give it a nice tint of red, really. So that's just purely for color, not for it to be spicy. Only two teaspoons in, 20 kg chicken is nothing. It's not gonna make it spicy at all. Um, and then we've got our turmeric. So we've got about 30 grams of turmeric. Then we've got our curry powder. There's about 50 grams of curry powder. Then we've got our um, cumin. Cumin's about 15 grams to 20 grams. And then you've got about a teaspoon of garam masala and then about 30 grams of uh, coriander spice. All gonna go in together, doesn't matter which order it goes in, just all gonna go in. And this is the bit where you could put a little bit more water because the spice will start, I've got it on full blast now, the spice will start to burn if you don't. So this is the bit where you can add a little bit more water. I've already added a bit of Water, so I, don't, I think I'm okay. You've got to be careful here with spices. You don't want to burn. I've got like a big spade here. Stainless. 
we can't use, we do use the little spoons, but you know, for bulk cooking like that, the gravy or for the gravy or the chicken, we need a big, big kind of thing like this. So I'm just going to stir it with our. So then I've got 10 grams of salt. Um, you can kind of put this at any stage, really. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you'd, you'd obviously first put the oil, the garlic, ginger, tomato paste. After the tomato paste, you could really put it at any stage. Okay, can you see? So a lot of people ask me, um, you cook your uh, chicken in the base gravy. This is pretty much it. This is like a, a miniature base gravy. As you can see, I've used the blended onions for the base gravy in it. Or you could use normal onions. The process is just, like I said, a little bit faster because the onions are already blended. Otherwise, you are, if you put normal onions in, you have to wait for them to melt. Right, so can you see bubbled up nicely like that? You know the spice is going to be Blend them nicely. Your chicken is now ready. Right. What's very important is that you keep stirring it, or you do lower the gas, otherwise the bottom bit will be burnt, and then you get a burnt taste and everything. So I'm slowly going to edge the chicken on the edge. There's a technique because I'm going to pour it all in, but you've got to first, if you pour it all in now, just gonna splatter everywhere. It's hot, hot, um, hot sort of uh, sauce, really. So a lot of people ask, like, you're sort of cooking a curry. This is sort of cooking a curry from scratch. The main difference is that we're gonna make it very watery. Um, so we're gonna add a lot of water to keep the chicken moist because obviously we're gonna cook it again. But cooking a, a, a curry from scratch is the same basis. We probably just a little bit less water. So as you can see the edges, I'm just putting the chicken in. And then what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna use it as a cushion. Can you see it's not going to splatter because it's not going on the sauce too much. Just, just using that as a cushion. There you go. And then now you can put the uh, now you can put the other ten kgs. Now put it on maximum gas, the chicken is cold, so it, it shouldn't burn. And we're gonna let the spice and everything infuse it to the chicken. We use this to keep, as you can see, I'm scraping the bottom. just going to be adding water. Um, you're probably going to add about, I've got two litres here, but I probably need about a litre. Depends. What you want to do is you want to cover your chicken with water. So as at the moment, as you can see, there's some chicken on top that is not in any sauce. So you want to cover all that up and you want to keep stirring without, throughout. You want to keep stirring throughout. Make sure you scrape that water because it's going to burn. Okay, I'm ready for the water. I've got two litres in there. Oh, so I did use the whole two litres there. Could add a little bit more, but as you can see, most of the chicken is now covered in the water. Now, from the chicken, a little bit of water will come out as well. So I'll probably get a little bit more excess. So 
the final step now is we're just going to put a lid on it um, and we're going to keep sort of stirring it throughout. It's a, with our industrial cookers, it's going to take about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. It's the summer at the moment, so it's very hot. That will cut the cooking time uh, by a little bit. So with anything we bulk cook, the temperature does matter. So in the winter, it takes a little bit more time. In the summer, it takes a little bit less. So I'm estimating 30 to 40 minutes. And I'll tell you how you know when it's done. It's been about five minutes. Just going to give another I may, I'm going to have a little bit more water. So make sure the chicken is nicely covered. Yeah, that's much better. So you want to stir it continuously. Especially when the chicken's still quite hard and not cooked, because once it's cooked, if you stir it too much, it's going to break the chicken. Okay, so we're now going to, uh, to the brie cooked chicken. I think it's done. It's bubbly, bubbled up nicely. The oil has disappeared. And then I'll give it one stir, but the difference is I'm going to be very careful. The chicken is probably nice and soft now. I don't want to bash it too much and I'll break it. So I'm just literally, ever so gently, just lifting the bottom to the top. Of it. Right, to me that looks done. I'm just going to lower the gas. Just going to lower gas. A couple of ways you can tell it's done. So we've got our uh, thermometer here, and it should be above 63. So yeah, mine's hit about 70 now, so that's fine. The other way I check it as well is, I just, just it's quite hot, but obviously I'll, my fingers are, my hands are used to the heat. I just press it like that, and it rips off. And as you can see, it's, it's nice and white, it's, it's not pink, and then, you should be able to just kind of, maybe you need a glove, get, get a piece of chicken and be able to just, it's quite hot, just be able to just do this and it should just kind of tear off. Um, so a mistake I've made, which you've got to be very careful, is not to leave the pre-cooked chicken in the pot and think, well that's cooked, I'll turn off the gas, it'll cool down. The chicken will start ripping and I've done that, I've lost 20 kg of chicken because it's just, shredded basically so very important you can leave it for a bit I would say no longer than sort of five ten minutes or absolute max uh, leave it there and then get one of these things drain out the sauce we will put the sauce in later and then we're going to just sort of put it in these we're going to put it in these steel trays dry for now but we are going to put the sauces in I'm just going to divide it and that's got a really nice, really nice smell to it. You can see the, oh, I can smell the chicken, the spices, that, that, that's really, really nice. But like I said, very important that you take it out and not leave it too long, otherwise it's just going to be have shredded chicken. Okay, so as you can see, I'm dividing it into three stainless steel parts. Now, a lot of quite people ask me, what do you do with the sauce um, of the chicken? Um, whatever's excess left, we, we just have to bin. Um, I know some of you say we put it in our base gravy, and that's fine. Uh, we obviously can't because we have vegetarian dishes, in, dishes, so we can't do anything with it. But if you're not vegetarian, you think, what can I do with the excess sauce? Just, you can put it in your base gravy, it's not a problem. 
You want to have a little bit of chicken in there, but, as I say, you're not veg, you're fine. So I'm just going to get a saucepan. I'm just going to get the sauce. So I'm just dividing the sauce now into three. That's what will keep it nice and moist for us. Otherwise, if you leave it dry, it's going to be very, um, the chicken will get very dry and it'll be kind of tough to kind of swallow and chew. So as you can see, if you look at the bottom of the pot, you have got a couple of bits uh, broken off, but it's not too bad. Um, but you, you're going to get that. You're cooking so much bob that you may get a couple of uh, chickens that may break off that are smaller sizes or that have been at the bottom for too long. You're going to get that. But overall, that's not bad. You know, there's not that much shredded chicken. If you do get a lot of shredded chicken, then when you put it in the curry, you just get sort of bits of chicken everywhere and it, it's, it doesn't look good really. So we're now going to just put that to cool down. Um, this will last us a, a day. To, uh, on a weekend, Friday and Saturday, probably a day. Weekdays, you'll probably cut out a couple of days, so it's nice. You can put it in the fridge after, cool it, keep it, keep it moist. Uh, never put it in the freezer, possibly could. Uh, we always consume it within a couple of days, really. Um, so there you have it, 20 kilos of pre-cooked chicken.